Okay. Our next company, third company, is Baby Knoll, a speech language pathologist, pediatric occupational therapist professor, and two licensed early childhood parent educators. Do we get all that? have teamed up to develop an online video program focusing on infant growth and development. The educational programming empowers parents to teach their babies, acti their babies activities, including speech, language, and play, fine motor, gross motor, sensory processing development, vision, and general parent education. The Baby Know program also provides parents with mindfulness and positive affirmation activities to do for themselves with their babies and or with their Caitlin families. The company developed by Candy, are you Candy? I'm Candy. I welcome Candy. Um, a PhD, CC-SLP, and then we got Bethany DeJarnett. Is that per correct, pronounced got it. correct? Okay. And Wendy Walls, is that correct? You got it. Okay. All right, Candy, the floor is yours. <laughs> we failed to mention two people. Uh, Cinnamon Tyson is our other early childhood parent educator, and then Caitlin Raz is our speech language pathologist. So on behalf of them, I am honored to be here, and thank you so much. We honor all of you for giving us your time today and sharing your talents, and we thank Scott County for having this competition. So as I mentioned, I, or as they mentioned, I am Candy Sile with Baby No Bodies, Hearts, and Minds. So what is the problem that Baby Know is seeking to solve? When you have a brand new baby, you go home and you're probably exhausted. You're having a hard time getting food on the table. You might be overwhelmed and at times it's scary. You're like, what was that color of poop I was not supposed to remember to watch for or what temperature or why does my baby not stop crying? And so parents want to go to bed at night thinking I've done enough to support the growth and development of my baby. And additionally, it takes a long time to look for information on the internet. Sometimes you're scrolling through YouTube channels, sometimes you're looking at mommy blogs and you're like, I just want that one answer. And so what we do, or why is this important to me? These are my two children, Luke and Landon, and I remember as a new mom thinking, okay, everybody keeps telling me, read, sing, talk to your babies, 20 minutes a day. Read, sing, talk to your babies, and I did that. But I kept thinking, well, what does that mean for their development of their body? How do I teach them to roll over if they're not doing that? How do I teach that pincher grasp to get food in their mouth? Or how do I teach them the social emotional, like just reading to them? Like, how do I teach them to be kind or show them that I love them? And I can do some of that, but let's think about let's doing it in a much more comprehensive way. So at Baby Know Bodies, Hearts, and Minds, we empower parents to be the first and most important teacher of their baby. And we do that by providing 52 weekly videos for the parents to watch. They are five to 25 minute videos that parents can access at any time of the day. Some of them are watching them at 2 a.m. when they're doing those nightly feedings. And we know that parents are smart. So how we've done this is we've created a year long course that we've broken up into different modules, zero to three months, four to six months, seven to nine months, and 10 to 12 months knowing that babies develop very differently kind of in those categories. We give them the fine motor sensory integration lessons, gross motor, speech language and play, vision, school readiness, some curriculum learning, and being ready for school. We give general parent advice and then positive affirmation statements for parents to use with their babies. And then the thing that's really unique about Baby Know is we've combined the medical community, so we have a speech language pathologist and the occupational therapist, the two early childhood parent educators, and then a well-being instructor to really comprehensively support the growth and development of the parents and the babies during that first year of life. And the other thing that we do is we include seven lessons. So each week after you watch your video, you get to go home and try these really easy, simple things, put Cheerios in an ice cube tray, and that helps the baby develop pincher grasp. Super easy things to do to reinforce that learning at home. So what is the price? We are charging $297 for the year-long course or $89 per unit. So parents might want to come in and test this out, or if your baby is seven months old, you might just want to enroll in the third and the fourth unit. Our five-year goal is to capture 5% of the market, which would generate $44.5 million in revenue. So how is Baby Know better than the competition? So there are other online programs, but 
parents have to kind of piecemeal everything together and search for like an infant CPR class or a sleep course. We are all in one place for parents to find and participate in. As I already mentioned, we're taught by educators and clinicians, and that also is a differentiator in, the, in this space. And the thing that we think is really important is baby no opens with mindfulness. So we invite the learner to take some deep breaths, to look at their baby, to appreciate their baby, and to be present to learning. And we tell the learners that you and your baby know together. And that's a really important differentiator because there's a lot of research right now about mindfulness and how we're better in our moments. We're not stressed, we're more present, and we also have better health outcomes or better school and work success by doing mindfulness. And finally, we have positive affirmation statements. So we sh share with parents how to tell their baby different things like, baby, you are beautiful. What you are creating is going to be cute, beautiful for the world. So we really share all those ideas to use with the parents. So where is Baby Know? We spent 2020 developing the course. We enrolled our first beta testers in 2021. We are now in the hustle phase or the research and exploration. <laughs> we are meeting with anybody and everybody to talk to them. We have recently met with a high school program that wants to use Baby Know with teen parents. And so we're looking to sign a contract with them. And then they will get high school credits in health and science for taking Baby Know. We are also working with businesses and so the Minnesota Itasca project came together and said that businesses have a really important responsibility to support babies during that first three years of life, because 90% of the growth of brain development happens in those first three years. And not only is that for employee retention, but then the future workforce. <laughs> so we're looking at working with some businesses to support them. And we've also been talking a lot with uh, neonatal intensive care unit staff to figure out how we can use this in the hospital setting. We are hoping for the rest of the year to do our work on preliminary sales and then run pilots in these different categories, which then we want to publish the findings in academic um, journals and at national conferences, including the American Academy of Pediatrics. So in 2022, we're gonna refine our market. Are we gonna be more in the business to business, schools, direct to consumer? And we also um, hope to look at targeting both parents and grandparents to buy the course as a gift for the grandbaby. And then we're gonna hire our sales staff. 2023 and beyond, we know that it's going to take a while, so we are going to work with the hospital systems, which will be a little bit slower go, and then also look at um, government funding. So what are the sizes of the market? Minnesota is trending about 70,000 babies born per year, and the United States has 3 million. Uh, we have about 500, a little less than 500 high schools in our state, and about 30,000 in the United States. Businesses, obviously, Baby Know is going to work with mid to large size. We do not want mom and pa shops. <laughs> we need to have uh, businesses that have a cohort of people having babies together. So 148,000 or 32.5 million in the U.S. And then finally, in that last category, about 130 hospitals in, the United, uh, in Minnesota and 6,000 in the United States. We currently have five employees. And so as we mentioned, the instructor of well-being, myself, and we have two early childhood parent educators, our speech language pathologist and our occupational therapist. We are seeking to hire a sales force in 2022. And we are really targeting moms or dads who are caregivers that are staying at home and need a flexible schedule. We want to look at, as we refine our market, um, people who have connections in the education, business, or hospital industry. And then we anticipate having some more jobs in the future as we enroll different um, channels, we think there's gonna be a need for an account representative. So if we're getting all high school students enrolled, clearly we're gonna to have to track and make sure that they're graduating on time or they're getting their graduation credits done or the course is done. And then we also anticipate needing a social media manager and an accountant. So our future vision of Baby Know, Bodies, Hearts, and Minds is we are in the hands of 150,000 families in five years Parents are feeling empowered for their social emotional well-being. They feel empowered to take care of themselves and their babies and their families. And that babies really are on track to reach their developmental milestones and have success in life and beyond. And with that, I'll end with some of the quotes from our learners. Hold on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we'll start with questions, and uh, Angela, we'll go with you first, and then we'll come to Charles, and then go back to the other end and come this way. Sorry, Kurt, you're going to be last. 
<laughs> Great. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you. Um, exciting to know there's tools out there for a, you know, a very critical and interesting time, I think, for parents. Um, one of the questions I, I guess that I um, have certainly um, is content, content um, development. I know there's probably a core of this um, that is very similar and doesn't change, but I'm curious a little bit about, even as I look at your financial statements, um, the amount of money and the commitment, I guess, as it relates to content development and then creation of that in a format that continues to make it interesting for people to kind of want to engage. Yeah, so we filmed all of this during COVID. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we also know that um, we do have a need to update some of the content to actually have families that represent more of what we can see across America. We had to work with families that were willing to participate with us. So we do need to update it. The other thing that we know is there's gonna be need to update. So as we're working with this high school channel, we don't have a lot of representation of high school kids playing with their babies. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think that there's gonna be more need to update the content as we go on. We also are in conversations with um, maybe doing a prenatal mindfulness course right now. And so we also think that there is a channel to support pregnant women before they deliver and give birth, and then that could be a feeder into the baby no course. Just one other quick question. Have you thought also about um, the connection with the healthcare insurance industry? I, I think about um, just in our own business about what we are offering to our own employees um, about wellness and care and all of those things um, that, that kind of pro that are preventative to that, and then really also companies being willing to make an expenditure for something like this on you know employees' behalf. Yeah. So the Atasca project was the group of businesses that created that report, the first thousand days of life, and the importance of investing in the first three years and supporting employees. So we would like to run a pilot with one of the businesses that was the author, and they're doing pilots, and they're also kind of sharing best practices amongst themselves. The other conversation that I recently had, which is in the, in the business plan, but I'm not supposed to say out loud, is we have had a conversation with a um, company that does insurance, and what they're thinking about is offering baby no as an incentive. So when you go to your prenatal visits or your well-child checkups, that could be something that you choose as an incentive, as a reward for going. Thank you. You're welcome. Great job. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, when my first daughter was born, my mom said that there was no manual, and so I just I just texted her and said, "There's a manual now." She has she has no context as to <laughs> we'll, we'll see what she replies with, but um, I I thought it was. I, I thought it was really smart. Um, the when you think about lifetime value of your customer, teen moms. I hadn't thought of that portion, but if you can create content that uh, really does have great ideas and and, and does work um, and makes a mom's life and dad's life easier, certainly in those uh, critical times, I think um, you know the word will get out. You know, for a long period of time. That that's probably a good segue into my question, which is. Um, uh, the book Happiest Baby on the Block saved my wife and I's life. Honestly, we we uh, we've probably sold a thousand copies because we tell everybody about it and because it literally got our babies to sleep and we were able to you know that first full night of sleep was a big deal. Um, so uh, along the lines of Angela, can you tell me just a little bit more about like the videos? Are, I mean, are these like you know general practice like here's some advice or are we talking like Happiest Baby on the Block? Are we talking about actual you know? like uh, specific do you know to do's to make your life you know better and easier for you as the parent and and more healthier for the baby some of both so we actually reference happiest baby on the block and there's also a doctor that does this hold where you put your baby on and they suck the finger and you walk them around and so we'll showcase some of those best practices in the content. And so what I failed to mention is actually we have 70 plus collective years of experience in this space. So we know a lot of the best practices and heard some from some of those experts. We share with parents things like how to listen to your baby's cries and know what they're saying. And like oddly, I did this with my kids and I remember being like, I think that's a like unhappy cry or that's a gas cry. <laughs> and so you can really get in tune to your baby. And so like that's not anything that we've created, but we share those practices to show here some of the things that you can do. The thing that's unique and different is because we have that speech language pathologist, like 
oftentimes a kid, if you have a language delay, you won't get diagnosed until two years old. And that's a huge cost to the family. So what she's doing is she's showing you how to teach babbling through play. Like for instance, when you're breastfeeding a baby or feeding a baby, when the baby stops, and I failed at this, um, when the baby stops and looks up, they want you to talk to them. And now they're watching for language formation. And so really simple things that you wouldn't know them if you didn't know them. But at the same time, when you start to understand them, you're like, wow, that's really interesting. Um, one of the other things that our occupational therapist shares is like go in a dark room and flash a flashlight and the baby starts tracking. And so that's an important skill for vision. So really getting your whole body to work. And um, when things aren't working, I think parents are like, well, that baby's like way ahead of my kid. Like I've done that. And so you're wondering, like, what are they doing that I'm not? Or what tips? Because it's not, to me, it's not common sense. Like, I want to thought to put Cheerios in an ice cube tray to get that pinch of grass going. But it makes sense. Or to cut a, a baby sock and put it on your fingers and have them use two fingers when picking up rattles or other things. So it's, it's a combination. That's great. So you've just confirmed that there is a manual coming. So that's... That's great. <laughs> and just one last observation. Um, at $297 average sale price, when you think about hiring a, a salesperson and the amount of compensation that they will expect in terms of, you know, somebody that's going to have all the relationships that you're gonna, that, that person's going to need, um, you know, you'll have to sell the solution at, at scale, right, uh, at a very high volume. So um, I, I, I might think about you know, word of mouth, social media, digital channels prior to hiring a salesperson, but great presentation, thank you. Thank you, appreciate the advice. This is a great concept. Um, so we all sign non-disclosure agreements, right? But as I was looking at this at home, without breaching my non-disclosure agreement, my wife was sitting next to me and she's an early childhood educator and I, ex I was explaining the concept to her and she said, can we invest? So if you're looking for people, I'll give you my wife's name. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the, the question I have relates to the interactiveness of this, if there is such a thing. Um, so as a dumb guy, right, not knowing a lot about babies, um, I watch a video and I have questions. How do I get my questions answered? That's a great that's a great thing. So we are housed right now within the Teachable platform. And so you have the opportunity to ask for private coaching, and that's an hourly fee. And so you can reach out and you can ask us directly. We also have our email address listed on the website, so you can contact us that way. Um, we are looking at building in with our high school pilot office hours because we anticipate you know, some of these parents we've heard of. Um, like they're having a hard time holding down a job or paying their rent, right? And now they've got a baby. And so we're anticipating that they're going to need more support and guidance. So again, the pilot, like we need to learn what kind of support's needed to go along with the product. Great. Thank you. Love the presentation. I have a nine week old, so I am like, where can I sign up? Um, because I have forgotten everything about having babies. Uh, my question for you is um, kind of around your lifetime value and like how you think about your revenue stream. So 279, 297? 297. 297 is much more expensive than happiest baby on the block, but like pretty reasonable in the realm of things people pay for subscription wise these days. I think about things like um, the bump app or what to know when you're like there's some apps that my sense is they're free but they're lead generation for the other products that are being constantly pushed through those apps i think if you go through humana united you know self-insured companies as a, as a benefit you wouldn't have that and so you might be able to drive that higher ltv but if you're going to think about direct to consumer you might think about other revenue streams like have you guys given any thought to how you would manage that decision making or where you might like uh, 297 is a totally respectable LTV, but it's not when you start to think about acquisition costs, you can eat into that pretty quickly. Yeah. So I think we'd have to do a little bit more research on that, <laughs> uh, quite honestly. And then I think um, just off the cuff, we have looked at offering some like affiliate marketing rates. And so what we want to do and one of the things that we stand by as our company is we want to honor. So if we have other like social media influencers that are sharing it, uh, what we're understanding is 20% is a high 
uh, a high rate to give an affiliate marketer. So we want to look at like being competitive or we want to honor what they're contributing to that. But I think we have a little bit more research to do as we're refining our sales strategy and 2022 is where we hope to do that. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> actually, I, I appreciated Angela's question. I, I mean, my my thoughts, um, you know, certainly as a, a parent with a now a 31 year old and a 32 year old, so this could potentially be a gift for them um, in another couple years. But um, my question is, um, and Angela hit on one was uh, insurance industry, right? Wellness. Mm -hmm. But the other one is um, child care centers. I'm curious if in terms of this platform, is it something that our child care centers, their professionals could potentially be credentialed on? Um, you know, I have learned here in Prayer Lake as we just opened up yet again another child care um, facility. It is these... Um, neo, these youngsters, it's it's the zero to one that quite honestly are filling them up. It's the toddler in these COVID days that, that apparently is going to the next door neighbor's house and grandma's house. So our child care centers um, are full on their licensed uh, so this is infants. So I'd be curious what your thoughts are relative to this in the professional child care setting as a potential place, a beachhead as it were, uh, to then go from there and uh, with um, then up to the parents through the child care setting. Uh, so we haven't thought of going to the parents through the child care center, but what we have thought of is training the um, child care providers themselves. So Minnesota has a platform called Develop, which is the continuing education credit. So we are in conversation with them to get this as an accredited <laughs> course that daycare providers can produce. I did not put it up here. 10 minutes is fast. But there are about, I think it was like 14,000, I might have my numbers wrong, I thought it was 14,000 um, licensed child care providers in the state. Yeah, but then I think when you go at home, it's like crazy, it's a lot higher. And we talked to a daycare provider who did um, at home care, and she said one of her favorite things about Baby No is being able to pull one or two activities, because she's like, when you're so busy with the toddlers and everybody and diaper changes, she's like, I wanna make sure that I give that baby the attention. And so she's like pulling this out, doing one activity, Great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Candy.